are. Come on, can we just welcome Rising Sun, Middle River, right here in Bel Air. Come on, everybody, those watching online. Come on. Man, I am just so happy to actually play a part in my inner Jimmy Fallon moment. So you just give me a second. There's actually something in there. Um, hey, today, I just want to say happy Veterans Day to all of our veterans. Come on. Those of you that have served and are actively serving, I am just so grateful. I think as a church, we're so grateful. Families, we're so grateful for the, the price that you guys have paid in, in doing what you do and what you're called to do. So thank you so much. And it is an honor today to have one of my friends. Um, we've known each other for quite some time. Um, veteran, special forces. Um, and about 10 years ago, in the heat of the battle, um, his helicopter crashed. Um, he survived. Ten others didn't. Um, but it, it's an honor to have Carl Holt in the building today. Come on. Thank you very much. And, and I got to say, I, I, I don't know a more uh, a real and authentic and kind human being than your pastor, uh, Wade Haskins. Amazing. And, and before he goes on, I got to give props to the prop design engineer in chief, uh, Ariel, who did an amazing job. Here, <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> well, before we go on, I must say that his voice, like, Lord, just give me a voice like that. If I had a voice like that, we could conquer a whole lot of battles. So, um, no, it's just an honor to have you here. Um, Carl, we met in the 90s, I believe, if not early 90s, mm -hmm. teenagers. Yep. Um, we work together in ministry. So, where are you now? Well, what, what's uh, going on? What, what are you doing? Yeah, so uh, I'm in my uh, final few months of medical school. I'll, uh, in a few months, I'll uh, officially be an MD uh, physician and going into emergency medicine. I'm uh, right now actually in the process of uh, going through all the interviews um, uh, to find out where I'll, uh, I'll do my residency program. And then beyond, uh, we, we have a, a vision um, to, to affect change and, and make, uh, make an impact in a number of ways and internationally as well. Uh, so uh, we're excited, uh, very, very grateful for where we're headed. That's great, man. Um, wow, it's been a journey. Um, and for those of, in our first gathering, I mean, the, quite a story, Carl. You've, you've been through some stuff. Do you feel like that you'd be, you, you were, a, or, do you feel like you'd be able to get through or have the vision that you have now had you not gone through? Absolutely not. Uh, in fact, I would easily say there's no way, uh, number one, that I would become a doctor had it not been for um, going through all the difficulties that, that ended up uh, propelling me in this, in this direction. Um, and in fact, I could say um, unequivocally that I'm uh, extremely grateful that probably the best thing that's ever happened to me um, were, uh, you know, are, are those, those traumas that I, that I experienced. You, you, you mentioned the word grateful, and we're actually starting a series next Sunday on gratitude. And I, I'm just going to just extend an invitation to everyone that's here, that you're online, or maybe you're at Middle River or Rising Sun. You just don't want to miss It's the reason for this season that we're about to step into. And um, we're also going to end our talk today talking about gratitude. There's something, there, the secret sauce of life. It is gratitude. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Awesome. Um, a lot of people, there's enough people in this room, in all of our campuses, we've endured stuff. We've endured hardships. We've endured trauma, horrible things. And many people don't come out better. Mm. What's the difference? Like, talk to me. Yeah, so... I First of all, I'm a firm believer that it's not really what happens to us. It's, it's what happens in us. Can you say that again? It, it's not what happens to us. You know, we could, we could go all day and try to compare what you've been through and what I've been through. I mean, there are apples and oranges, you know, we should give up now. There's no way. 
you know, because there's people in this room that have endured a hundred times more than I could ever imagine have dreaming. So, you know, um, it's, it's not those things that happen to us. It's how we learn to deal with them, how we learn to, to process them, and then uh, pivot from a, from, a, from a, you know, position of, of feeling sorry for ourselves to uh, finding purpose and being grateful for the positives um, and, and uh, finding a way to, to allow those things to empower us forward. Wow. Yeah. I, in fact, I would say that, it's, that it is um, a, a transformational change of perspective to realize whatever you've been through is, they're not barriers, they're not obstacles. Uh, in fact, they are assets. They, are, uh, they give you a platform to be productive and, and uh, live a, a, a very purposeful life. So in other words, you're saying it's a gift. Absolutely. The best thing that could have ever happened to me. It, it allowed me to um, deal with the man in the mirror, and it allowed me to uh, uh, change my perspective instead of focusing in on my pain, to see possibility. And had it not been for that trauma, um, I, I would never have been able to envision myself being as productive as I am and planning to be in the future. That, that's powerful. And I, I want to talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. But, Carl, this is just... it. it we're catching up in front of everybody. So I'm just going to like, it's, this is a pretty powerful day for me. So, Sorry that y'all have um, to hear all this. So but. I've got to say this. I've got to say this. Um, Carl, when we met, um, you, you had a lot of things going on for you. In fact, I would like to say that you go through life with people and you pick out things about people and you just kind of stick them in your toolbox you know what I'm saying? Like, you're better because someone was in your life. I've got to tell you that I am a better man today because I was able to journey with this guy. This guy early on put a work ethic, like just watching him and being around him, I would say, you got to get up real early to get ahead of Carl Holt, right? And then he'd, he'd beat you there anyway. So, but he put a fire. Uh, one of the most gifted human beings, one of the sharpest minds, one of the you know, I always said, man, if Carl's not jumping out of an airplane, he's not living. That, that's been my perception of you from the jump. No pun intended. Yeah. Um, how, how's your water, by the way? Is it good? It's excellent, and I would like to affirm that there is indeed something in here. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Fallon. Can you tell me, because when we were doing life together, when we were working together, you were setting your world on fire, not literally, but literally, like transformation was happening, life was happening, ministry was happening, and I'm not saying or discrediting you by making your choice or decision, but can you tell me why? Why the military? Why did you, you did a pivot for sure. Why did you pivot and go in this direction? Can you talk about that? Do you feel comfortable yeah, talking about Yeah, uh, talk about culture shock, first of all. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a number of, of things that kind of all worked together to push me in that direction. Um, first of all, my grandfather had served in World War II after, you know, immigrating from, from Denmark. And uh, so that was, that. those stories were, were, were there, um, his service. Um, and, you know, after, you know, you, you watch planes go into towers and you experience that moment and, and you realize how much comfort you have and how much, of the life that we enjoy, and um, I, I felt like I needed to contribute something somehow that I wasn't, yeah. um, and I was, uh, so that was an aspect, uh, a little bit of my DNA, I think. Yeah, uh, and I, I even remember, I don't mean to interrupt you, yeah. but I even remember that evening we opened up the building. Remember that? Yeah, I do. For prayer. Absolutely. I, yeah. yeah, that, that, that was that. a pivotal moment. Yeah. It was. Um, and, and then there was also... Uh, you know, you, you, you go through something like 9-11 yeah. and that, then that moment, and there's a lot of ways that you can um, be motivated after that. Yeah. Um, and so for me also, there was a lot of disillusionment. I was, 
I, I had gone through quite a bit of trauma in my t early, early teenage years um, uh, with some gang involvement. Uh, and um, uh, so, so there was, um, and then had pivoted to uh, hardcore religion. Um, and I was disillusioned with religion. Uh, I was disillusioned with, uh, I felt like I was stuck in, in a lot of ways. Um, and so military service, you know, was, was an avenue for me to do something meaningful and big and, and contribute, but also allow me um, to kind of form a, a, a new life. And, and part of that was medical. Uh, so, you know, we, we had a mutual uh, friend, TJ, who had, yeah. was a police officer in Houston, was shot in the abdomen and, and uh, you know, went through years of extensive surgeries. And one of the surgeons that uh, helped save him initially was a, uh, a an army trauma surgeon. He's going through his fellowship there in in uh, Houston, and um, th that was when medicine opened it up. You know, kind of, I began to be curious and started reading books, and um, and so I, I felt like, you know, this is where I belong. I need to be in some facet of of medicine. This is where. Uh, you know, uh, you know, talk about serving people, and I just felt like that was where I needed to be, and didn't know what that meant or where it was going to end up. Um, so, you know, this was a, a way for me to kind of hit all those buttons all simultaneously. Right. <clears throat> and I remember <clears throat> totally off script. I remember during this season too, um, my man learned another language in like the quickest amount of time. I've ever seen anyone learn. Do you remember that? How can you forget? But, um, um, well, there's a lot of things that could make us forget stuff. But, um, but do you just, just greet. Can, will you greet Freedom Church in Spanish real quick? I mean, just, just because I like to hear you pues speak. Es un placer estar aquí con todos ustedes uh, uh, y compartir. Uh, con ustedes exactamente y, uh, el proceso y, y la jornada en que I have no idea estado. what you're saying um, but y, somebody y, here does y no he estado hablando acerca de ti but what I, what I was just going to say the pero puedo <laughs> did, did, are you cussing me out right now? no, no, no. because <laughs> I do know a few cuss words in Spanish <laughs> Why was I saying all that? I'm saying for him to take on a task or learn, I mean, this is what put a fire in me. He just has this ability. You had this ability to be a student at whatever, whatever you did, which doesn't surprise me about what you're about to hear at all, you know, as it relates to your accomplishments. So you joined the military. What did you do in the military? Uh, so I went in uh, enlisted to be a... Uh, special Forces medic, um, which of course there's no guarantee. Uh, at that time, they uh, they had opened a window for people basically to come off the street and yeah. try out, um, you know. And so um, I I went through that process. It took a uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of two two and a half years, of uh, you know constantly every day, not sure if you're going to make it to the next day. Yeah. Um, and uh, so after uh, you know a very extensive period of training. Um, and kind of developing some calluses in your brain and realizing you could endure way more than you could ever imagine that you could endure. Um, and learning through that process, uh, became a special forces medic and, and uh, served with my team uh, in several places. Special forces, Green Beret. Um, and on the way here, he's talking about how your body can endure more. And he's like, wait, seriously, you can do 20 burpees. It's not going to kill you. <laughs> And I'm like, that is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put a donut on, you know, on the, every, every time. <laughs> every rep, you just get another bite. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> it's not cool. It's not funny. <laughs> this hey, session be, is now over. <laughs> you got to be motivated. Whatever works for you, baby. You do it. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> so, green... Green Beret, Special Forces, I'm not surprised you over accomplish everything you put your hands to. You're working overseas now. You're deployed in Afghanistan 2009. Tell me about it. Uh, so uh, we deployed uh, there with my team. We had uh, been through uh, some four and a half, five months of pretty, pretty constant combat. 
uh, and uh, this this group of guys, uh, you know, we became, uh, as you can imagine, very close. Uh, after after you know, you you have to trust the man to your to your right and left, and uh, be willing to die for him. And um, we had been through a lot of, of combat. We were doing a lot of uh, uh, you know high value targets that we would uh, go after all over all over the country of Afghanistan. Uh, and so that included, you know, we, we, in that time period, especially uh, uh, IEDs, improvised explosive devices were a big deal. So we, you know, we would be on the trucks, but we tried to stay off the roads as much as possible and be in the most unexpected places. Uh, and uh, so, you know, we were, we were traveling however we could, sometimes on uh, uh, four-wheelers, ATVs, um, that uh, we we had uh, kind of outfitted specifically for for us uh, to be able to go all over, uh, so, and then a lot of a lot of helicopter trips. Uh, we flew we flew all over, um, mostly at night, uh, and and uh, we would uh, you know drop in sometimes. We would have to to uh, walk you know uh, through through a mountain range or whatnot uh, to get where we needed to go, uh, but it was a, a, it was just constant. Um, throughout this period and uh, you know very you know we were also trying to not only just go after the uh, bad guys but also build some rapport with uh, uh, with with the people we were working with so we we're also training um, our uh, uh, counterparts yeah. as Ra well like raising up leaders absolutely yeah absolutely so when you're a lot of mentoring yeah um, this is this is where the point of the conversation begins to shift mm -hmm. your deployment quickly ends what happened so uh right about the four and a half five month time mark um we uh underwent a a mission uh where we uh a couple hours away from we were headquartered uh flight um where we went after a bazaar that was a, a kind of a trading ground of sort um about 300 shops uh, right there on the border of Turkmenistan um, where drugs were being exchanged and the Taliban would, would pay, uh, you know, basically uh, get their arms through the drug trade. And so we were trying to stop, uh, you know, some of their revenue source. And so um, we uh, flew into this area, you know, somewhere around 11, 12 o'clock at night, I think, when we got there. Um, we're in a, uh, uh, you know, we had a, a fight on our hands in, in this high mountain valley. Um, and uh, we had, you know, a fairly successful uh, operation um, that we had uh, destroyed, you know, several million dollars worth of drugs, several million dollars worth of um, uh, ammunition and, and weaponry and explosives. Uh, and so uh, in the process of, of uh, trying to get out of this situation, we had been, uh, you know, counterattacked, and there was just a handful of us, uh, you know, Americans on the ground, and we were several hours away from any, any kind of help. Uh, and uh, somewhere in the neighborhood, about 400 Taliban were massing. We did have a, um, a, a bomber that was, that was uh, you know, several miles up uh, and that notified us that there was a large group of Taliban that were kind of amassing on our, on our uh, area. So we were trying to get out of there. We were in the middle of a, of a, of a, of a pretty nasty fight. Um, and so there was several instances where I figured that, you know, we may not even make it out of this. Uh, so uh, into this scenario, um, uh, two helicopters came to, to try to rescue us. And I give uh, uh, so grateful, I mean, those, those pilots to even go into a scenario like this that's so hot. Um, uh, literally, we were, we were dropping, uh, you know, s small bombs on, on areas as these helicopters were touching down. Uh, we couldn't see them because of the smoke, and, and uh, even through our uh, night vision goggles, you couldn't see the helicopters. You, we were just literally running toward the heat and the, the sound of the motor. Um, and uh, um, our uh, the, the first... Oh, oh, can we just breathe for a second? Just, just where you're at, just breathe. This is real. This is real stuff, man. And I just want to say again, veterans, you know who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you, man. No, no, no. I, I understand. I'm trying to paint the picture here yeah. rather quickly, but, you know, it's where we get the, the gist. Um, and uh, so we were holding on to each other, kind of running to the end. Uh, um, as people were getting into this helicopter, it 
kind of got bottlenecked. I ran toward the front uh, and just sat down on the, on the, on the floor. Um, and as the last man was on the ramp running up, we were already lifting off. Um, and somehow in the middle of confusion, evading fire, um, uh, we, we almost uh, ran right into a mountain. And so about 800 feet off the ground, uh, these are... Uh, these are not, you know, little hills. Uh, these are these are pretty big mountains. And so, um, as we, uh, you know, they realized we're about to hit this this mountain. Uh, they pulled up, and we lost thrust and power. We fell back into this village and and crashed into a compound. Um, uh, and and we were falling on our side for the most. I remember falling. Remember thinking, this is it. This is the end of life. And. Uh, um, those pilots had the presence of mind to, at the last possible second, to uh, crash headfirst um, into this compound that then fell back on top of us. And the, the helicopter was was a large one, um, you know, these that have uh, uh, two two rotors on them, um, the Chinook helicopters. And um, so, uh, you know, as we we fell. Um, uh, I remember that moment, and, and you know, you can show the, the, the next picture here where, where the, uh, the, the bomber that was high up was actually, we have all this on video, actually. Uh, uh, you can see a little dot in the bottom uh, left of that circle. That's our, our helicopter coming out of the, the smoke and, the, and the, the, the dust. And these are these uh, large uh, mountains that we almost crashed into. And so then the next picture, you can just see that's pieces of helicopter that were going all over this this valley as we crashed, um, and so uh, ten ten Americans died uh, pretty instantly. Um, uh, the helicopter broke in half, and uh, because I had ran up the middle to the front, uh, that's where I was, um, and so uh, uh, one of the only ones to survive in the. The, the, the front half that took all the impact. So, but there was a, a number of people that survived that were on the back half of this, of this helicopter. So I remember, um, and stop me if I'm, if I'm rushing through this too much, but uh, I, I remember, um, remember falling. There was a period of time where I was unconscious and kind of um, uh, realized that I was still alive and kind of shocked by that. And, uh, but could not breathe. There was too much uh, equipment on top of me. Uh, and uh, I spit out my teeth and a little bit of my, of my jaw and uh, tried to take those first breath, you know, and, and couldn't, had to move equipment off. And at that time, the, uh, the fire was, was really starting to pick up. And so I could see uh, the kind of the carnage of what, whatever was left. Uh, and and um, the, the, the fire was burning. Um, and uh, uh, realized that some of the equipment that was on top of me was actually limbs and, and legs and body parts uh, kind of strewn, strewn about throughout this area. Um, and there was people screaming that, had, that were on the other half of it that had gotten out. Uh, you know, if anyone's in there, you've got to get out now. Um, I and, tried you're, to th and you're the medic. And I was the only medic. Only medic that's yeah. on this team. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I, I tried to stand up fell because I had I had so many inj injuries I was so badly broken uh, and uh, it actually kind of saved me because uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10,000 rounds from some of the mini guns that were in this helicopter uh, were cooking off in all uh, in all directions uh, so it kept me low by not being able to stand and so I started to crawl um, tried to um, uh, you know uh, render some kind of aid there was several bodies that I thought were somewhat intact still, one of which I uh, tried to, to really uh, extract and, and um, uh, for a period of time and then kept moving. And, and I think that was a moment that stayed with me because I felt like I didn't, I saved myself. I didn't stay there long enough. Um, and, and, you know, all the mental games that later I had to deal with of uh, perhaps someone would have had their father uh, had I not tried to save myself. And um, so as I began to, uh, to crawl and kind of make my way where there was an opening, um, uh, the only other uh, uh, Green Bray that, that survived the crash uh, put his life on the line, stuck his neck out, and reached back in and, and uh, helped pull me the rest of the way out. 
Um, and, and it took about, uh, within five or six minutes, um, uh, there was nothing left of this helicopter that it completely burned. I believe they have a pick of, there, yes, there it is. Yes, we do. And so, so this is one of the, just one of the rotors that's uh, yeah. stuck in whatever's left of this building. Wow. Well, quickly, what, what were your injuries? Uh, so uh, I had a uh, kind of head to toe. I had a traumatic brain injury. Um, didn't realize the severity of it until later. Um, I had uh, crushed my face in. Uh, you'd never know it, but uh, you know all this is, is metal now. Um, uh, I lost a significant portion of my uh, top jaw. Um, I had dislocated both shoulders. I had broken my back. I'd broken uh, my left leg in multiple places, uh, ruptured tendons and ligaments. Um, and uh, um, uh, th that, that's kind of the highlights yeah. of the, the physical injuries. And I will, I will have to just, you're just gonna have to trust me on this. He came out ahead. He looks way better now than he's a stud. I need a lot of help to begin with. He's a, he's a stud. Look at him. Um, so beyond the physical aspects, Carl, you have alluded to some psychological aspects. Could you, could you talk about that journey? Do you mind? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, obviously survivor's guilt. Is, yeah. a, is a huge component of this. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, for the longest time, I was really determined that I was making it, I was gonna be back with my team, that I was gonna be functional, I was gonna prove everyone wrong, including myself, I, you yeah. know. Um, and uh, so started to work through, it, it, initially they said it was about, you know, two years worth of uh, recovery and surgeries, and that, you know, began to grow. Um, and so, uh, you know, for the, all these physical issues, uh, it turned out that we're probably still not done. Uh, I had my, my 33rd surgery uh, about six months ago, seven months ago. Um, can, I, can I just stop you real quick? Mm -hmm. My man run the New York City Marathon last Sunday. <laughs> all right, come on. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. First time <laughs> in, in, in over a decade. <laughs> um, so... Uh, it, it was uh, part of the psychological journey was this never-ending physical problem. Uh, just never seemed to go away. The moment you thought you'd made some progress, uh, then there was some, some other complication. It just never seemed to go away as you're trying to move on with life. Um, and, and so within about a, a, a three or about a three-month period, after this crash, I walked away from a marriage that I'd been in for 14 years. Um, I walked away from religion that I'd been firmly ensconced in for uh, my whole entire adult life. Um, uh, basically, all the, the foundation support systems I said goodbye to um, uh, was, was, was lost, uh, was, was uh, fairly alone, but there was one constant, and that was my, my two beautiful kids. So when I came back, uh, from this crash and in the hospital room for some time, um, these two little kids walked into this, into this room. And my little girl was about four or so. My boy was about seven, had just turned seven, I think, um, uh, at this time. And uh, so these, these, that's what I came back to. Um, and uh, without them, I probably wouldn't have made it because uh, there was plenty of times, uh, you know, even for a while, there was times... I felt like they would be better off if I had burned up or if I went away. Uh, and so, you know, the, 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 the feelings uh, of uh, wanting to do something to, you know, to commit suicide in a way that they wouldn't know that that's what dad did, um, that, uh, you know, all these, these, these thoughts. And so about 10 months after uh, was when a lot of the flashbacks, you know, came when I would be driving and, would feel the heat and, and, you know, see myself covered in blood and feeling um, all the things I felt and saw and, and, uh, and you know, the, the per whoever that was, that person that I had, that I had not stayed long enough perhaps with and, and uh, you know, convinced myself that it was, a, it was pure selfishness that I had continued to crawl out of that, that crash and, and, you know, blame myself. Um, and, and, uh, there were uh, multiple times that I called hotlines asking for help. 
um, scared to death, uh, again, these two little ones. And so through this process, uh, you know, through um, now it's been uh, 10 years, you know, these, these kids have grown up with dad going through this, this process and me trying to act like I was sane, um, even when I wasn't. Uh, when I was going through this, and so I, they, I've watched them grow from that, you know, to now they're in their teenage years, and, you know, my little girl, you know, is, is more disciplined than I have ever been in my life. I don't know how I lucked out, and my boy is doing amazing. Uh, he's graduating college here this spring. I'm super proud of both of them. Uh, they've, they've just been amazing, and uh, we have a lot of fun together, and, and uh, uh, they're a whole lot crazier than I am. So, uh, but but uh, through this process, I think it was uh, I had to learn to be brutally honest, where everything was on the table, every aspect of my life, everything from my childhood, um, you name it. Uh, I had to learn to be brutally honest uh, in a way and transparent and and authentic in a way I'd never learned before. Um, uh, that was the only way I was going to make it through. Uh, and so counseling for years and times where I thought I was good and, and you know, something would happen uh, or a road rage incident or I would realize there was so much anger that was still inside of me. Um, and uh, so through this, through this process and counseling and, I mean, I overdosed on psych drugs one time and wound up in the hospital. There was, you know, and then having major surgeries for a long time. It, you know, we averaged about two, two, or about one major surgery every two months for, for years. Um, and then, you know, uh, getting out of a wheelchair and learning to walk and then, you know, dealing with the traumatic brain injury. Those things um, uh, fed into the psychological aspect of this recovery. And so, you know, when, I, when you think about recovery, we think about, you know, hey, hitting some, some milestones, hitting some points, and like climbing stairs, you know, it's just one stair at a time, you know, linear process, and that is not how it works. You know, so you look at this one on the right, that's reality. And so wherever you are now, you can blame yourself and feel bad that you're not making this progress that you think we all think it's supposed to be this way in this linear process um, when, in fact, this is how we all have to recover from things. This is, this is the process that's reality, and the end of the road is still high. You're still going to make it, but don't get down on yourself when you feel like you're going in circles, and it is chaos, and it is messy. If you stay in that process and you stay honest and stay real, and stay humble, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're going to end up, but it's going to be a, 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 a time. And, and so, you know, in counseling and dealing with all these things um, and, uh, and learning to be okay with who looked back at me in the mirror, um, you know, that took a long time. Yeah. But somewhere in the middle, I started, uh, I, I started, you know, talking to other people and other veterans and other victims of trauma, all kind of trauma, sexual assault, and all these other, and realizing that anything that I had been through was just a vehicle to, to help someone that may have been through a hundred times worse than I had been through. Wow. And so finding purpose uh, was a huge component and realizing I had a lot to give back. Wow, that's awesome. One of the, and I, we didn't talk about this much, but one of the core values here at Freedom Church is the most fulfilled people are walking out their purpose, not being a square, uh, you know, a, a round peg or a square peg in a round hole. But truly, we say it here that God has equipped us with a unique gifting. So our goal here at Freedom Church, as you know, is to walk with people to find that purpose for fulfillment. And your story, the redemptive process of your story is to help another story, right? Um, and, I, and I think, I feel that that's where, where you're going, that this is what you're saying. And we also say that, that God will never waste the pain. He won't do it. One, at one moment of your life, you'll be able to look back and there's redemptive value. Um, Carl, as we close, you talk about gratitude. 
I want you to lean in, dude, whatever you've got to do, to lean in and just talk to me about this, 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 the secret of gratitude and how it's played out in your story. Well, first of all, it wasn't there all the time. Right. And, and I think if we're going to be real, uh, when you're in the middle of, of that process, it's not there. <laughs> um, you know, I, I had a, a, a moment uh, I'll never forget, I was, I was, you know, after I had been walking a while and I was trying to run, uh, I saw this guy with a, with a fake leg, and he was running, and he was just as happy, and it ticked me off. Because, first of all, it was like, you know, 5.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock, and, you know, why would anybody be happy at that time anyway? But here's a guy with a fake leg, you know, and he was just, you know, morning, you know, real chipper and cheery and, you know, either he had, you know, had too much coffee or a little cocaine or something. I don't know what he'd had. <laughs> but, it, 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 you know, I was like, and I was in a process where I was feeling sorry for myself for all that I was going through. And here's a guy that, I mean, I, had to, I have both my legs and I have my arms and I... There's so, no matter where you are, it dawned on me, no matter where I am, there's somebody that is way worse off and is doing more than I'm doing and uh, with less. And so it dawned on me that, hey, I have so much to be grateful for. I could spend my life looking at all the the, the stuff I'm dealing with and, and obstacles and problems, or I could realize that I've been given some amazing gifts. I have gotten benefits. I've had strategic people in my life at random moments that have just shown up and, and you know, uh, given me, blessed me with something. Or, or And so I realized I had so much to be grateful for. And, and by realizing that, I realized that had I not been given all these benefits, I wouldn't even be where I was. Yeah. And so intrinsic in that perspective is the realization that I am in debt. I will be forever indebted for all of the benefits and blessings in my life, no matter if I don't have what somebody else may have. I have so much, and so I could never repay that. I could never give enough to repay that. And so that perspective of, of realizing that I have so much to be grateful for informs my purpose. When you realize that you have been given so much, you automatically realize you can't squander whatever it is you have. And you have to, to use that to pay it forward. And so I started talking to, to other victims. I started sharing my story and then hearing theirs and, and uh, encouraging people. And, and in that, I think I helped myself way more than I helped anybody else. Because uh, I was a mess, you know. Some would say I still am. But... You know, gratitude, and I would say, is the, is, is the soil. It is the environment that allows your purpose to grow. And, and, and as you realize that you've been given so much, you know, grateful people become humble people because they understand what they've been given. Can you say that one more time? Grateful people are humble people. Yeah. They know that it is not about themselves. Even, even this talk right now. We're talking about this little story. It's not even about me. There's no reason to talk about it other than it is just something I had to learn to go through. And there's people that can benefit from it. Whatever you've been through is not even about you. You can't, it's not about, it's not about turning that in on you. You know, people that are seeking to be happy all the time. Happiness is... Happiness is not something you seek. It is a byproduct of being grateful. Holla at your boy.
Grateful people are humble. Grateful people are happy. That joker that passed me on that trail, I have no idea who that guy is. I'll forever remember him, though. Because grateful people are like magnets. People, want, people don't want to be around complainers. People don't want to be around people that, that are constantly focused on, on the negatives. They want to be around somebody that realizes they have a lot of positives, a lot of things to be thankful for. And so, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of close it with this. Uh, my grandfather had uh, open heart surgery back when it was a fairly new, new thing. He was about 42 years old. Uh, and, and, and he was in a cohort of people that were undergoing the same surgery and uh, most of whom had already died on the table. And so he was afraid. And he had someone knock on his door, a complete stranger that knocked on his door. His nick my grandfather's nickname was, was Buck. And the guy said, Buck, you don't know me, but I heard about you. And he started unbuttoning his shirt. Looked like a normal guy. But underneath, he had this huge, brand new scar all the way down the center of his chest. And he showed my grandfather that scar. He said, Buck, I know you're afraid. But if I can make it, so can you. Everyone is afraid to be vulnerable. You know, we're afraid to, to show our scars, especially nowadays with social media changing the way we think that life is supposed to be. And whatever you post, that that's reality. Truth is, is that we all have scars. And that scar is useless unless you show somebody and say, hey, I don't have it all together. But look, look at what has transpired. And if I can make it, so can you. Say it again. If I can make it, so can you. Say it again. Whoever is sitting right next to you, you have to inform them, if I can make it through, so can you. And whatever I went through really isn't about me. It's so that I could show you a little bit of the scar and be vulnerable enough so that you can realize you can make it forever grateful. Can we just thank Dr. Carl Holt today? Come on, everybody. So thankful, my man. Come on, as we're all standing at all of our campuses, can we just give our good God some praise? God, we praise you. We thank you. You don't make mistakes. You never have. You never will. Come on, Rising Sun, Bel Air, Middle River. Let's put our hands together for our good God.